Unshaved. All right. How old are you, by the way? 19, once again. 19. So you don't even know who Lorraine Newman is? No, definitely All right, that's not. That's okay. All right. Let's go to uh, Artie. You got to think of someone the kids know, Gar. She looks like Amy Irving. All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Great so, reference. I'm going to say unshaven as well. All Completely. right, Fred. I'd say it's like a paintbrush, unshaved. Unshaved. A lot of us say unshaved. Robin says totally shaved, and um, Casey says. Uh, Howard, I'm going to nail this one, because I think if she's going to shave down there, she would have shaved her stomach first. She got a little treasure trail going on Whoa. down there. So I know this one. I know this one. It's, it's going to be totally unshaved. All right, oh, let's see. I Pull down your pants, Akiva. Treasure trail. You know what? It leads to the package. Well, you're trimmed. Shaved or unshaved. You're not, unshaved. That's unshaved? That's unshaved for me. You're totally unshaved. That's natural. You haven't oh, trimmed anything. very little hair, then. Well, it's grown in probably for like a couple weeks now, so I don't shave. I wax if I do do the bikini look. Oh, you wax? Yeah, like so, depending, like, you know, so when the summer season comes around, you know, you got to get that bikini looking good. Well, so far, the most unshaved goes to Benji. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what we just saw. But yeah. anyway, <laughs> girls, thank you for playing shaved or unshaved. Doug Goodstein wants to or say something. Alexia and Asia would like to make out to uh, wrap up the segment. Oh, they would. All right. Well, go ahead, girls. I'm not going to stop you. And uh, what a great way to close this segment. I'd like to make out with the Asian chick. <laughs> <laughs> if it's at all possible, I like... Asians. Do you think you two will get together after the show? Maybe. Really? Well, it <laughs> well, looks like there's a love match. All right. Well, <clears throat> shaved or unshaved is the name of the game. Shaved or unshaved. If you want to play it for yourself, you can go to designavagina.com. That's where you can actually look at women and guess whether they're shaved right. or unshaved. Right there on the website. Shaved is that right? unshaved. Ladies, thank you. You're beautiful ladies, and uh, how nice that you pulled off your pants for us and let us see what was doing down there. That's nice. very generous of you. We learned all kinds of things, what it is to be a fetish model, everything. Also, yeah. I have good news for my girlfriend. I'll weigh 160 in about a month because I'm done eating after <laughs> I just saw Benji. D-E-Z, D-E-S-I-G-N-A-V-A-G-I-N-A. -E -E That's the uh, name of the website. Okay, girls, thank you so much. And there it is, Robin. Shaved, shaved or, or unshaved. We see London. We see France. Wow. You know, I always, like, hot chicks make money in the strangest ways. Yeah. Fetish parties. Have you ever heard of such a thing? I wish uh, I could go to a party, have women worship my feet, and then yeah. get paid for it. That's never going to happen. Why well, keep thinking that, remember Nicole Bass wrestles guys for an hour? Yeah. It's 500 bucks an hour. I know. Schmoes. Schmoes. <laughs> Benji, what was going on with the toilet paper, dude? Whoa. Like, no, I was, what? I was kidding around. Oh. No, I don't know. But she really yeah. stuck her foot all the way up. I know. Yeah. yeah. I know. I saw. Mm -hmm. Did was you like that? Was any of that arousing? She was a cute girl, but nah, it wasn't. I mean, I, I'm sure if she really did it, I mean, she used her feet like her hands. Yeah, so, so what? You know what freaked me out about that, Howard? I've yeah. been with you, what, for 19 years? I know Fred for all that time. I've never seen hmm. your genitalia. Right. That's the seventh time I've seen Benji. <laughs> Benji whips off those pants and rapidly. And he loves to show it. He does. Well, like, I just yeah. want to know what, what happened in that young, cute girl's life right. to get her to where she doesn't mind putting her foot in Benji's crotch like that. I, know. I, is, I know, mean, just what, what <laughs> happened? What went wrong? What the... What, I, I to talk to her. I mean, she just clearly went, okay, Benji, I mean, yeah, because you'd see her walking down the street. She just looked yeah. like a cute yeah, she's teenage a, girl. She's adorable. Hey, and that was fun to play for me. I liked it. Uh, I liked the game. It was great. I'm, st I'm not over Benji. No, no. <laughs> you want to put your foot on me? None of us are over Why don't you do some foot thing with him? Oh, please. All right, we got to uh, take a break. And uh, when we come back, we have so much to get to. It's... It's... Uh, it's it's mind-boggling how much. The strangest thing about Benji was how he wanted to turn around and show you. What, what did I want to show him? <laughs> well, he was off camera, so I wanted to make sure we got it. No, but I'm saying he turned around. It was very... He could have just... Yeah. Taking his position, he knew what you wanted, but he gave you a full right. frontal. <laughs> he likes showing you. You're, you're an exhibitionist. No, I just have no problem with it. We do. Sure. I don't get a sexual thrill out of it. Who knows what? It, I guess he just likes being on camera. Yeah, I, that, that I get a sexual to, to thrill. Get from. attention. The right. other girls were excited. They were like, "I'm giving a sexual thrill." <laughs> <laughs> hey, Paul, you're on the air. Hey, this is wonderful. I love this. Yeah. How come uh, no, nobody wanted to find out whether any of them were downy soft, though? You know what I mean? How softness, texture. Well, I mean, dude, we only have so much time. Uh, I know. That's terrible. We have a lot to get to today. So Sal, you're on the air. Hey, Howard, it was great. By the way, you came up with this idea back in the WNBC days when you were uh, promoting a shaving cream. Potiswa. 
Yep. Yes, so, I know. Hey, Howard, why don't you do a panel girlfriend wives shave their own shades? Because I don't think any of our girlfriends or, and or wives will we'll pull down prove. their pants to prove <laughs> what's what going on. How about Gary's teeth brush or unbrushed? God, that we know already. Hey, see me tonight at the brokerage with Yoko the Clown and High Pitch Eric. All right, Sal, thank you. Take care. All right, there's Sal checking in. You can't say Sal the stockbroker anymore. No, he That's hardly is one. <laughs> <laughs> that hasn't been for a while. And uh, we'll be back after these words. Great for the legs and the arms. And use it on your husband's chest and back, neck, ears. It works. Uh, Howard Stern Show. Rock Radio 92.3. Can't um, have on the E Show tonight, uh, Whack Pack Blackjack. Check it out. And starting Monday, we're on at 10 o'clock on E. We've moved our time period from 11 to 10. And uh, well, that starts the Drunk Show and the Miss Butterface contest that everybody seemed to like. But you really do need to see it. Okay. Now, I got tapes upon tapes upon tapes here. I don't even know where to begin. So well, much you stuff. You talking about this ODB press conference. Oh, yeah, I got that. I got uh, here. I'll play a couple of quick uh, voicemail. This is that racist uh, voicemail guy calls every day. You ever check out these jerk off bitches that go to Oprah Winfrey show? When she comes out at the beginning of the show, these stupid twats have this glazed look over their eyes, like they're part of a friggin' cult for this nigga. You know what I mean? I think they all want to sniff her. They want to go down south and lick her and taste her. And go behind her and taste her too. It's nothing but a bunch of lesbian glazed over look. Guy upset about the Oprah audience. <laughs> I have a theory that that guy, if you listen to the voice quality, I think that's Regis Philbin. <laughs> <coughs> Maybe. He's, and this is... He snapped. This is... Uh, he starts screaming about Christina Aguilera. I don't know anything more about it. Get a load of this Christina Aguilera with the black hair. Unbelievable. Man, she looks like she's got a lot of miles on her. She's getting, like, raggedy looking. Chubby. Looks like worn out. Don't get me wrong. I still wrap my legs. You're going to have yeah. to hit the button on that yeah. one. You got to listen to those a little careful. He doesn't understand. He hasn't gotten all the rules down that boy. <laughs> all right. So now, before I get to the ODB press conference for you, what about them making such a big deal about Katie Couric on the Tonight Show? I said, does Jay get upset about this? Katie stole Jay's show. She was on one time, and everyone's talking about how she could do anything in right. television. And you said this would happen yesterday. No. Yeah. That they start nominating her for everything. Put her on for two weeks and see if the ratings are high. Watch out Jay Leno. Katie Couric was a smash hit Monday night sitting in for Leno as host of The Tonight Show. More than 40% better than his usual Monday night ratings. For the uh, season to date. This is his worst nightmare. Johnny used to go. Johnny Carson used to go on vacation. And then the people who sat in for him would do better. Yeah, but. For a while. Jay wouldn't let anybody sit in for him because he didn't want to see this. And he thought Katie Couric would be a safe bet. Well, I don't know. you know, and But, but Jay only allowed this after Dave let people sit right. in for him. You right. know what I mean? But I'm still saying he was looking for somebody who wouldn't score big. Right. Well, this is great for him, actually. He should have her do it once a week. What's the difference? And if she went against him on a regular basis, like remember when Joan Rivers went, to, went against That's Johnny, right. the novelty wears work. off. Yeah. It's a novelty. Nobody wants to hear Katie Couric do a monologue. It was a horrible monologue. I played it yesterday on the show. It was awful. It was just fun to see somebody sit in on The Tonight Show. Who's not supposed to be able to do it. That's right. Uh, now they're, they're carrying on. I'm simply saying Jay made a bad thing for himself because everybody's like, hey, Jay, maybe you ought to sit out every once in a while. Mm -hmm. People like it. It was an outstanding stunt, said, uh, and she charmed the audience, said former NBC Entertainment chief Warren Littlefield. Uh, it's easy to see just how broad her talent range is. What is her talent? She sat in for one night and people tuned in out of curiosity? Yeah, and in the morning she asked questions. It's no secret that Couric has been flirting with leaving today for some time. The grind of early morning wake-ups combined with a new third hour for the Today Show have been weighing on her for some time. Oh, boo-hoo. Paying her $16 million a year. Yeah, that's some burden. Oh, jeez. 
Three whole hours she works? Woo. Uh, they say they offered her an Oprah-type show, and the move could have easily turned Kirk into one of the highest-paid personalities on television. Of course, only if she got ratings. Right. You know. It could turn you into. Uh, ultimately, insiders say her decision to stick with Today had less to do with money, although she did become the highest-paid news personality on TV. Then with staying at NBC and its well-established news organization. Kirk appeared relaxed and in control during her one-night stand as Tonight Show host. The first guest host for the show since Leno took it over from Johnny Carson in 1992. She had no problem flashing her sex appeal, showing off her legs, and even joking about her cleavage. Oh, boy. There's a treat. Katie Kirk's cleavage. Jeez. Katie Kirk's legs? Oh, my. you got to be kidding me. Oof. Who's getting turned on there? Who's writing this article? <laughs> guy named Don Kaplan writes for the New York Post. Um, audiences respond to these things little said little feel I guess legs and boobs Katie is a superstar and it was a chance to see her in a role audiences hadn't seen her in before if she decided to do a movie of the week there's no question in my mind that there'd be a big audience for her as well she could write her own meal ticket it appears her current deal leaves her with some wiggle room to leave today if she chooses before her contract is up according to insiders who cares so let her leave Let's see what she does. Gives a crap. Let her do a, a nightly show. Put her on ABC. I mean, who cares? The day in and day out grind. You see, no one's going to sit there and tune in Katie Couric. Get a grip on everybody. They're very funny. Because they do this all the time. Somebody has uh, one thing like this happen, and all of a sudden they could do anything. Yeah. She's Superman. <laughs> what is it, Stuttering John? There's this, like, news thing about how Katie Couric had, like... Um, uh, outrageous demands, at, at the, you know, like you know, when she hosted the Tonight Show, and yeah, none of the guests were good enough for her. It says uh, Jay Leno's staff have become really bitter about it, <laughs> about her outrageous demands. <laughs> and Jay Leno's upset because he did the Today Show and there was no difference in the ratings. Not only was there no difference, he got panned critically. Oh. Everybody said he looked stiff and. Wasn't really listening to the questions or the <laughs> answers people gave him to his questions. Check out the Tonight Show, Jay Stiff, and and, and, <laughs> and doesn't listen to the answers. Yeah, like, where's the difference? I've sat on that show. They Literally, there's a blank stare coming back at you. <laughs> he, just, he hasn't listened to a thing anybody ever says. I guess it makes a difference when the blank stares being given to Cole and Powell. Yeah. All right, let me see. Oh, here's Clay Aiken's first song. You were asking me about <laughs> that. Right. American Idol is just unbearable at this point. They've got to end it. We got to stop now. Yeah, it's enough. When he gets down to like three, it's yeah. really awful. They did. They're singing three songs a piece. Yeah, and... it was a whole concert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look out on a summer day With eyes that know the darkness in my soul Shadows on the hill They gave him this song to sing. It's not fair. It's they a, made him sing this They song? made him sing it. It's crap. Th th this is what they made him sing. Ugh. Yeah, I mean... Sketch the trees and daffodils Who could, who could sing this? Catch the breeze couldn't do this song. Though. Yeah, exactly. Shut up! You know what I'm doing now? I'm actually trying to snap my own neck. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of that. Well, here's a good piece of tape. Here's some broad on local news defending her son who's been charged with seven rapes. Oh. Her basic theory is there's no way my son could rape. He's too goddamn good looking to have to rape anybody. Listen to this. This, this is a newscaster or just a mom or something? This is like a mom. Okay. I know my son. My son will not rape nobody because he don't need to rape nobody because my son looks too good to rape somebody. <laughs> Darlene Williams doesn't hold back when it comes to defending her son, Tyrone Williams. He's 23 years old. His mom doesn't stop there. He dropped dead gorgeous. He can get sex from anybody. We've got our first look tonight at the sunset to be so handsome. His mom says he wouldn't rape. Cops say he's responsible for seven sexual attacks since January. Three in the Bronx, four in Chelsea. Cops say Mr. Williams would follow his victims into the elevator and rape them there. Yeah, his mom son. says it's a case you of know, mistaken identity. My son has two babies on the way. He already has a daughter. He has out of up teen girlfriends. Why would my son need to rape anybody? 
I think she's proud of him that he's got Look two, at the credentials. <laughs> two kids and umpteen girlfriends. And, <laughs> and he's got a daughter and two babies mm. on the way and umpteen girlfriends. Yeah, my son, he oh, got plenty. <laughs> he's a real guy with a conscience. Well, I'm sure the defense will want to put her on mm. the stand. I know I want to take these clips and use them again. you got to save these, Fred. Oh, she was amazing. What a character witness his mom will make. Yeah. My son, too good luck. No, I, no. Want, I want He's to do my own son. He's gorgeous. He's dropped that gorgeous. Okay. <laughs> oh, here. I got some tape of that uh, primetime special I was telling you about. The people in England on Millionaire who were coughing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might like this. This is fun to listen to. It's a little long, but it's kind of fun. You're going to love it. Stick with this. The major isn't sure, but as he starts his self-proclaimed new approach, he will tour the possibilities and listen carefully. Notice anything? I would have thought that it would be Aristotle and Nassus. <laughs> Why? Um, well, Ronald Reagan, I mean, I'm, I know who he is, and I don't remember him ever being married to Jacqueline Kennedy. Rupert Murdoch, um, in rehearsals, we had a question on him, and Jacqueline Kennedy wasn't mentioned, so... Um, um, Adnan Kasahogi. Ah, doesn't ring any bells at all. Aristotle and Assis ring, rings a bell or two. Um, second husband, just for Jacqueline Kennedy. One of my sub strategies is to take my time. Oh, you've got some sub strategies. Well, sub -sub -strategies. <laughs> okay. Get ready to listen again. In this tape, the company that owns Millionaire boosted the background audio so you could hear. Okay. So I'll just rethink this one for a moment. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident it's Aristotle and Assets. <coughs> the prosecution is going to argue that this is the beginning of a dazzling and brazen fraud. That's cool. That's funny. Hey, they don't say you can't cough. Yeah. Well, why is his wife in there with a condition? Hmm. She should be in the hospital. The wife, and then they, they, it was so elaborate. They even had another one of the contestants. So somebody else in the audience would be coughing, too. Coughing and signaling. Oh, it was it's an unbelievable special. It was really great. Baron Houseman is best known for his planning of which city? Rome. Paris. Berlin. Athens. I think it's Berlin. Actually, it's not Berlin. I think. <laughs> So I was 10 minutes ago, you thought it was A1. <laughs> I think, I think it's Berlin. Next time, it's worth half a million. It's a huge amount of money to win. There's also a huge amount of money to drop. Hausmann. It's more a German name than an Italian name. And a Parisian name and Athens name. So we think, I don't think it's Paris. <laughs> Two coughs on the word Paris. <laughs> Ingram seems to forget to check each word slowly, and the prosecution will say that Whittock had no opportunity to help, so... They argue it seemed that Whittock was about to risk everything. And he's going for Berlin, you can hear he's going for Berlin, and then all of a sudden you hear a cough, which is now acknowledged to be from Whittock, which is, <coughs> no! It's partly in whisper, but it's a loud no like that. When I say partly in whisper, it's not no, it's no. And it comes right on the heels of the cough. Let's hear that again. <coughs> Moments later, is the nose blow another signal? <coughs> the effect of the nose blow seems immediate. There's a cough, there's a no, and then just after that, there's a, a little series of nose blowing as well. The nose blowing only ever happened at that point. Um, and it's only my subjective opinion, but I think if you've got a system, you've got to have a, an all-stop signal because otherwise you could end up in a, in a very difficult position. And I think that was probably part of their all-stop signal. I don't think it's Paris. <laughs> Just as Ingram is dismissing Paris, Whittock's cough seems to stop him mid-sentence. I don't think it's Athens. I'm sure it's not Rome. It's Berlin, but there's a chance it's Paris. I'm not sure. But I think. Think, think, think. Um, I think I have read this. I think it's Berlin. 
that the all stop signal again? <laughs> Diana Ingram stares at Woodick's direction. <laughs> Paris. I think it is Paris. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna pay. <laughs> Ingram seems to respond to that cough immediately. Paris dummy. <laughs> He's the dumbest guy. Yeah. Oh, please. They, they would have gotten away with it if they only went to like half a million. It's like the people have to have pneumonia. Yeah. <laughs> and then his She's wife, an imbecile. As he's dismissing Paris for the fourth time, his wife throws up in a bucket. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it was it's such a good special. Yeah. 2020 did it. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I say if they get away with it, let them have it. Well, you know, every scam guy, you got to remember this. The mob was always good at throwing scams because they, they knew how to do it after a while. They learned. You can't go for the million. His wife even yelled at him afterwards. They had a fight in the dressing room. He said, why would you go for the million? Can't be greedy. Yeah, don't be greedy. 250000 Even the producer said, right. yeah, you know, it would have been unclear at that point. Right. Right. It wouldn't you know. have been so much coffee. Right. But the guy went for the million and won. And then he'd go, it's definitely not Paris. <laughs> It's Paris. It's Paris. You know, it was like, and they went to court and they said, we didn't do anything. Yeah. My, my wife was very ill. Maybe his wife has SARS. My argument would have been, yeah, I got signaled from the audience. Where in the rules does it say I can't do that? You didn't read that to me. Exactly. That's my point with card counters in Vegas. If they can do it, hey, yeah. man. Hey. Yeah, sure we cough. Why not? Don't you wish you thought of it? But how do they know all the answers? Why didn't they go on the show? I don't know. Why are they putting well, that dummy in the chair? Because both of them had already, but one of them had already been on the show. Then there was a third guy in on who had already been on the show and got to 32,000, and they figured this all out. I see. Yeah. You know, so between the three of them, they got... They got all the answers. Yeah, yeah. First of all, on the celebrity version in the States, Rosie O'Donnell used to help people all the time. Right. Remember well, her? They said you could. Up to a certain point. I hated that about that version of the show. That she rose your thought, hey, 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 you know. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, uh, you know, I'm always honest. You can trust me. Yeah. Let's see. I played you the Hollywood Squares mention, right? Right. They mentioned me last night. Yeah, where I used to hate Rosie's helping out was on Hollywood Square. She would never bluff the audience. She'd go, I really, really know this. Oh, yeah. come on. Yeah, that pissed us off. Okay, let's see. See if I got any other tapes. Oh, this is a good one, too, but it's a long. Dick Smothers and his dad. Dick Smothers and his son, Dick Smothers Jr., are yelling at each other on Inside Edition. Oh, so really? give me that. Yeah, it's great. Wait, I don't know who I feel worse for in that whole scenario. Yeah, I can't figure that one out. <laughs> it's a little tough for me. Yeah. <laughs> I think I feel more sorry for a senior. Yeah, but according to Junior, Senior wasn't much of a father and... Yeah, Junior wouldn't be the kind of guy he is if Dick had been pretty good as a dad, I guess. So I don't know who to feel bad. Yeah, for. I'm confused too. You want to hear the tape as long as we're talking about yeah. it? All right. Okay, it's a little bit. It's a, it's a minute long, but remember that dude, Dick Smothers, the comedian. His son now, Dick Smothers Junior, is going around being a porn star with his name. Using yeah, using his name. Using the name Dick Smothers Junior, and <laughs> they're on Inside Edition, and they get into a fight over it. Uh, it's great. I don't call this luck. I call this desperation. I call this pathetic. Anybody that gets in this business is pathetic. Okay. That's comedian Dick Smothers. When we sat down with the legend and his son, we expected to discuss their latest projects. But what our cameras captured was completely unexpected. Their relationship fell apart right in front of us. You weren't part of my life. You're all, hey, maybe you should do that. Maybe you shouldn't do that. Oh, I'll see you later. And I don't hear from you for two months. When you quit school. You're like, you're on your own. When you your quit own. school at 17 and don't finish high school, you're on your own, baby. It's dirty. It's filthy. It's angry. It's twisted. And you're in deep trouble. This kills the soul and the heart of people. You're, Pornography you're, you're in, sucks. You're insane. It sucks. You're I'm insane. Say, I don't think so. You are here. insane. He doesn't approve of it. Fine. I don't expect him to approve of it. You know? You're on my prayer list, and there's a lot of people who oh, are praying Don't for you. do me any favors. Point Shout is, Dickie would not be worth one dollar if he didn't use the name Dick Smothers. And they wouldn't be interviewing you right now if I wasn't girls on camera. That's right, and I don't need this interview. I certainly don't need this interview. Then don't do it. Shortly after this, Dick Sr. ended the interview. <laughs> Isn't that great? Jesus. Father and son arguing on TV. Jesus. Worst nightmare. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Tossing that word legend around a little lately, too. We sat down with the legend and his son. <laughs> he was a legend, man. You think so? Yeah. They broke ground. 
I hated them. I hate the Smothers Brothers. I hated their TV show a hundred years ago. But I you'd I give them legend, the, legend status. Yeah, they, because they got on CBS and supposedly like like broke ground and yeah. helped end the Vietnam War somehow. I don't know how, but who knows? Well, they you know they had a lot of political commentary on yeah. that show, and and supposedly they, they didn't back down. Nobody else would have on, and yeah, they lost the show. I think because of censorship problems. Hmm. Maybe they aren't legends. <laughs> I don't know. I'd argue uh, no. I don't know that they're legends, but they certainly right. did something. Yeah, in well. Time. Yeah, I can't figure out who I'm on, whose side I'm on on that. <laughs> I know, feel I bad for the know. dad. I doubt if uh, Dick Smothers was a great dad, but, mm. you know, it's it's terrible to have your son in porn. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just a nightmare. <laughs> Shouldn't happen to anybody. That's right. I don't wish that on anyone. <laughs> <laughs> your kid going into porn with your name, Dick Smothers Jr. You just didn't name him Dick Smothers Jr. to go into porn. People are already, like, lining up for the Matrix. Yeah. Are, I mean, you being people are, like, out on the street sleeping or something? Yeah, like, you know, they don't know what to do with themselves. There are people who, who have who've killed themselves waiting for the Matrix. Yeah. Some other weird dude. The New York Times has this whole big scandal going on. There was this. Uh, they hired this uh, black report. I, I, you know what? For such a liberal newspaper, I heard there's not a lot of black reporters. Right, there. right. Like they, they sort of can't find any black reporters. Somehow. Somehow, but the one they got, they finally got one. They got a black reporter, brought him along in some kind of program, and then the guy like lied in like 900 different stories, right. allegedly. Yeah. And now there's a whole... And they, everyone's, like, freaking out over there. Well, I think the the other newspapers are having a field day because the Times is all the news that's fit. You know, they got such a reputation. And they're enjoying this scandal. You know what? Uh, all the newspapers... It doesn't mean anything to anybody else. All the newspapers can make fun of the New York Times, but bottom line, the New York Times is the greatest newspaper there ever was. Right. Not that I can read it. I don't understand it. But I'm saying I know it's... Whenever I sit down and concentrate on it, I am amazed at how brilliant that paper is and how they put stuff together. So all the newspapers can laugh at them and say, hey, you know, anybody could hire a reporter who's dishonest. It could have happened to the Post or the Daily News. I think the thing that's weird is because the guy was black and the Times was so desperate for a black reporter mm -hmm. that uh, they put up with a lot of crap. And they should have probably well, fired him earlier. Yeah, they're trying to explain now how he got so many uh, things wrong and it slipped by everybody. And they don't know how to explain it because he did have a lot of oversight. Tell you what, Leona Helmsley's lawyers are really smart. Yeah. They're smart. They said she can't get a fair trial in New York and they proved it. They went out and polled people and they said, <laughs> who's the most unlikable New Yorker? And everyone said Leona Helmsley. She won. We hate her. <laughs> but smart. the judge doesn't care. In whatever case that is, they're keeping it right here anyway. You probably read this already, but here, I'll ask uh, Artie since he, I know he don't read. <laughs> What's uh, Who is the second person most hated? You, right behind Leona Helmsley. You know what, man? I got to be honest with you. I saw it. You did? Who yeah. was it? It was... Uh, now You'll I, still get it wrong. Now I forget. <laughs> I told you. Uh, no, it was Lizzie Grubman. Right, Lizzie yeah. Grubman. Yeah. Lizzie Grubman was number two. Al Sharpton was Making way up the there. list for the first time. Lizzie Grubman at number two. I think she's going to stay for a while, Robin. Yeah, you know, when, when she when she ran over those people and pulled away, that, that kind of made her unpopular. But you know what, something? As much as people say she's unpopular, all I know is I was eating my dinner at Nobu one night. She walks in. You would have thought the Queen of Sheba walked in. Well, unpopular doesn't mean you're not. I mean, hated doesn't mean you're not popular. They are popular. She seems to be having a great life. So is Leona, yeah. even though she's hated. Woody Allen was up there, I was glad to see. He was number six, though, behind Donald Trump. Yeah, well, yeah. People really hate Trump. Yeah. I think they're jealous of him. Yeah, go figure. And I, I couldn't believe that Martha Stewart was so high on the list. Well, and rightly so. I mean, you know, she's another one of these hypocrites like Les Moonves. <laughs> who uh, sits there and tells you one thing and does another, you know. <laughs> She's telling you, you know, I, I had lived a good life, do be this. Be gracious, be yeah. this, be that. Meanwhile, there's a, a pretty good chance she got some information ahead of the rest of us slobs, and uh, we all got ripped off on stocks, and she didn't. Yeah. So people hate that. You know, people I'm hate that. I'm just wondering what she hated before they knew that, or is she just hated for that? I think they hated her anyway. Yeah, I don't think that had anything to do with it. I think she would have made the list no matter what. Leona Helmsley's number one, 71%. Lizzie Grubman, 62%. Al Sharpton, 60%. And rightly so. Yeah. The man's despicable. We'll never forget Tawana Brawley, so F you. I agree with all three of those. Martha Stewart, 49%. I'm there. Donald Trump, 47%.
Woody Allen only 29%. Now, yeah. Woody Allen should be way ahead of Donald Trump. Yeah, I, I kind of like Trump. Woody Allen is effing Mia Farrow's daughter. Right. Who was his girlfriend forever. Uh, George Steinbrenner, 27%. Rudy Giuliani, 20%. I know, he made the list. I, how the hell Who is... doesn't love Rudy? But he's also one of the most loved. Yeah. See? Now, Michael Bloomberg, 26%. Some broad named Ariana Huffington. I wouldn't even know to vote for her. Oh, she's some socialite and columnist. Tina Brown, 20%. She's an editor of something. It used to be, anyway. She doesn't have a magazine. The New Yorker. Yeah. Norman Mailer, 13%. Bill Parcells, 8%. I get that. Now I hate him. He left the Jets. Yeah. Giants, too. Right. You don't do that. He left everybody. Can't leave. <laughs> now he's going to be in Dallas, right? I, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I saw pictures of him with the Cowboy shirt on. Oh, I want to oh. punch the TV. Yeah. Got to hate him. But I don't know how any Yankee fan could hate George Steinbrenner. He buys good players. Yeah, he's the reason. Come on. Yeah, come on. But, uh, come on. You guys get pissed at him sometimes for his criticism of the team and the manager. You know come what, on. Robin? Though, bottom line is that guy plays the game the way yeah. it should be played. I'm with Artie. I'm just saying, I've heard Yankee fans scream about George Steinbrenner. Uh, no, not me, though. I like him. You haven't heard me do that. You're not a Yankee fan. Oh, that's true, too. <laughs> <laughs> he's a New Yorker, though. Right. Uh... I don't know. whole world screwed up anyway. I'm the only one who knows what's going on. <laughs> Everybody knows it. Everyone knows I should be president. When are you going to run? Just I'm so get busy. Up off that chair and start running. I'm too goddamn busy. <laughs> Straighten out this mess. What are we going to do about uh, that bombing? The Al-Qaeda. They say, you know, Osama bin Laden was behind that bombing. Yes. Well, President Bush says uh, these people will will feel American justice. What are we going to do? <laughs> Got to believe that guy when he talks. Yeah. He doesn't move fast, but he eventually moves. So he's very calculated, and uh, he takes his time to make his decisions. I don't know what the next country's going to be. We got to take out Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Just take them out. Just take them out. No, we should probably take out Syria next. Teach and, and and when they say why, we'll say because you just blew up a ship. Or whatever they blew up. They blew up a building or something. Killed some Americans. That's it. You lose your country. Sorry. Hey, Kevin. Oh, excuse me. I mean... Hey, Kevin. You're on the air. Yeah, Howard. Are hey, you Kev. surprised that you didn't make the list? That the most hated? No, because you want to know something, Kevin? Here's a secret I'll let you in on. I bet you I was on the most loved. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, I know so. I bet you they don't publicize that in the post because uh, it maybe it doesn't fit the agenda, but I guarantee you whenever they were doing this survey, when they said, who do you love the most? I bet you it's Howard Stern in New York. I'm, I'm the number one rated uh, radio personality. People, I, I, I mean, I, I, people somehow think that I might be hated. When you make people laugh, they love you. I mean, I walk around, people love me. They seem to. I mean, unless someone's not telling me something. I mean, there's probably some old bags that walk around hating me, but I, the the fact of the matter is, I'm a very loved personality in New York. I'm. But what would people say? You know, I mean, I don't, I don't know, know what they asked in this thing. I think I think if you said, "Well, who do you love the most?" I think that maybe I'd be one of those guys. Because if you asked me who I hated, I certainly wouldn't think of Leon Helms. Right. I would say like Benji. Or... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't Tom know. Chiasano. Tom Chisano. Less movies. <laughs> I would say the guy who runs the newsstand on 6th and 54th. Hey, can I ask you another question? Yes, Kevin. If they have, you know, I think they're talking about doing an, another Batman movie. Yes. If they, if they ask you to play, play the villain, like the Scarecrow, would you play that part? Yes. You if would? it was a good script. It'd have to be a good script. There hasn't been a good Batman now for the last two Batmans. By the way, do you know the comic book The Punisher? Yes. Yes, I because read it. they're about to make that into a movie. That could be good. They already made the movie. The Punisher is a good, uh, yeah, The Punisher is a, is a real good comic. And uh, Thomas Jane is The Punisher. I don't know him. I can't tell you how to know him. And John Travolta is going to be the villain? You see already, that sucks. Is Thomas Jane Robin the guy who played Mickey Mantle? Would you know that? Yes. That yes, guy. he was. Yeah, right. yeah. John Travolta is the villain. <laughs> Who wants to see? You see that the, the Punisher is a real dark comic that uh, is the story of a guy who uh, seeks revenge and he kills 
people, like other yeah. superheroes, have a problem with him. He's just a regular guy who's really good at killing people. And so he he's kills. He's just a murderer, a vigilante. Yeah. Kind he of. does what, what we just did in Iraq. He's like Death Wish. He's like, he, will take, he will take you out. Uh-huh. He's not going to sit there and worry. Like he's not going to lock you up in the insane asylum like Batman does to the Joker. Right? He does. Does he agonize about it? No. No. You know, when he goes out, he's going to kill his family. Was after. killed by by some some guy. Uh huh. And uh, he's going to go out and kill you if you if you are against the laws of this country. You see, if it's the guy who played Mickey Mantle, I think he's a good actor, but I can't see him playing a dark superhero. Not even close. I don't know, but all I know is John Travolta as the enemy reeks of Hollywood miscasting. Yeah. Mm. And it's, again, you know, someone believing that John Travolta is still relevant in terms of getting people in the seats. It's just not. I would have shaved my head and played the uh, villain. You know, give myself a different look. You yeah. would shave your head for that? Sure. Really? Yeah, if I played actor. a villain, an I'm an actor. I'm an artist. <laughs> look at private parts. I'm brilliant in that. And everyone goes, well, you played yourself. Okay, so I'll play a character next. That's all. They don't realize that you had to play yourself at various ages. Hey. Whatever they realize or not, I know I can make more money you at the movie theater than so John Travolta. E the whole clue is that you made it look so easy. All I know is if they came to me with a good script and said, we want you to be the uh, villain in The Punisher, I would have been interested. And I know I could have brought at least $50, 60000000 million to the box office. Mm -hmm. At least. Just out of curiosity. But the schlubs didn't give me the script because it probably sucks. I've turned down a million scripts already. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go to a movie theater and see myself in a crappy movie. But you didn't see The Punisher. That didn't cross your desk. No. You said you recently got a pitch that you uh, were interested in. Yes. That's I'm talking still, to uh, someone now. Yeah, it's still I'm going not, on. Yeah. 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 But that's something I got to develop. Nobody's handing you anything. Right. We bored this guy. <laughs> we bored him to death. Uh, I've He's had hung enough up of that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got to take a break. We come back. We'll do the news. Here's Beetlejuice preparing for an appearance on the Howard Stern Show. Yeah, listen to me. Yeah, I'll, I'll listen to you. What you're gonna say is, just listen. Right. See, I'm about to go upstairs. Right. And get and, and I get no, laid. No, listen, listen. I'm about to go upstairs and learn how to get laid. Right. That's all. That's all. Say my name is Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Say my name is. Say me. Say my name is Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Say my name is Beetlejuice. My name is Pretty Juice. And I'm going upstairs. I'm to going upstairs to, to get laid. To learn how to get laid. To learn how to get laid. That's all. My name is Beetlejuice. Okay. And I'm I'm going upstairs to learn how to get laid. Okay. That's let me say that. Ready? Right okay. Right here. I learned how to go upstairs and get laid in six months. <laughs> the Howard Stern Show. Radio 923 K Rock. Thank you, sir. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, Mike, go ahead. You're on the air. Hey. Hello? Yep. It's not Mike. It's Russell. All right, Russell. Howard, let me ask you a question. What are your plans after you finish radio? Oh, well... I mean, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I know I got a bunch of stuff going with my production company. And uh, what's going on with the sequel to your movie? Uh, <laughs> Who is it? I, I'm not having a sequel to my movie. I you're would, not I, making a... Uh, I, uh, you're not going to come out with the private parts too? No. No. Ah, oh, too bad. That was a funny movie. Thank you. All righty, Howard. Take care, all right? Some interesting questions. Yeah. Well, I'm producing Porky's and Rock and Roll High School. I got a cartoon coming out called Howard Stern, The High School Years. We're just starting to work on that. Yeah. Get that ready for next season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'm a pretty busy guy, and I own a film I want to direct. I'm going to do that when I get off the uh, air. Direct? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, he said that before. Yeah, I know how to Be do that. Be behind the camera as well. Would you also star? No. No, I think directing is a pretty hard job. Right. I'm developing a soda <laughs> that I invented with Robin. We co-produced that. Sweet. That's what we like to do Starting sometimes when we hang out at my place. We just uh, mix up drinks. Somebody said to me, what gives you the right to direct a film? I said, hey, if Kevin Costner can direct, so can I. Sure, why not? Why not? He hadn't done it before. Right. Look what he did. Dances with Wolf. There you go. 
I'm doing dances with wolves too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing an updated version. That's it. I'm going to bring it into like the modern day area. Oh, okay. era. Well, uh, Okay. <laughs> okay, let's uh, talk to uh, oh, I don't know. Gabe. Gabe, you're on the air. Jesus. Same to you. Let's go to Tony. Howard. Tony. Hey, now. Hey, now. Hey, dude, I got to tell you, man, you are the luckiest SOB in the world, bro. How you figure? You got these hot chicks coming in, showing their beeve and their boobs. Yes. Dude, I, I get my right testicle to sit there now. It's one of these days, man. Well, you're right. I am lucky. I felt lucky today when I was playing I shaved or unshaved. I loved it. That's awesome, bro. I'm telling you. I'll tell you who else is you lucky. Play a game, man? I said I'll tell you who else is lucky. Howard. Can you hear us? <laughs> I can't get anybody with a piece of Howard. I'll tell you who else is lucky. Who's that? You. Yeah. Why is that? Because I'm going to give you $500 cash, courtesy you're, of Dimension you're Home Videos. you kidding me. No. Howard, you rule, brother. <laughs> Equilibrium is the name of the uh, film. You've qualified for a chance to win a home theater system plus an equilibrium viewing party with John at your house. Oh, man. Dimension Home Video's Equilibrium. This movie will blow you away. Available on DVD and video May 13th. How's that? That's awesome, Howard. You rule, dude. So do you. Thanks, man. Thank you. Love you, bro. Thank you. <laughs> at that viewing party, sir, make sure you have $20 because John will need to borrow it. Give the, give the man his 500 Thank you. John, you're on the air. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Hi, John. Yeah, hi. How are you? I'm fine. I'm just a little agitated. I mean, I, I came to a screening yesterday to go see The Matrix, and, and uh, Howard had this fit. I'm Howard. Well, I'm shocked. Why did you have this fit? You ran out of the screening room like a little girl into the bathroom, and you were upset that I was at the screening. I'm trying to do my job, buddy. What's up? John, you, uh, uh, let's, let's, uh, I don't know who the hell you think you are. I'm John Glasscock. I've sat in with president CEOs of the company. John, 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 hold He's on. You just like accused this. me of running like a scared little girl to what the, I went to the men's room yesterday before the screen. The men's room, you peeked out with your little eyeballs looking out, and then you told your assistant what? to come back that these guys can't be in the screening. I What's went to the bathroom that? to pee, you oh, idiot. pee, you're a moron. You uh, looked at us, you ran out. And you I kept didn't on run out at all. Out. I did not run out at so all. So you were touching I yourself to you. and looking at me? I, I can't believe you. I talked to you when I saw you. You came up to me and said, hey, they're throwing us out of the screening. I said, I have nothing to do with it. Leave what are you talking alone. about? Your assistant, which knows my assistant, which knows the assistant, said, you guys got to go because Howard and his posse had to be by themselves. And quite uh, frankly, John, here's, I was John, your agitator. John, here is the bottom line on all of it. Because I don't care what you think of me. I don't care what you have to say. I don't care say. what you think of me. I think you're petty. How about that? If, I think I'll people you, don't realize how small and petty you are. Okay, and I'll tell you my side of it. Tell me. I was called by a movie studio and asked if I wanted a movie screening. No, they, you called them. Trust me. I know the deal, buddy. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. I get calls all the time to see movie screenings. When we called them, we said, we'll have a movie screening. They called back and said, we're going to, we can only give you a movie screening with the press. I said, thank you very much, but we're not interested in that because many times I've gone to movie screenings with the press and I end up being the focus of the article. They write down everything I say to my friends. So I'll bet I'll beg out of it. I don't want to go see the movie that badly. You're so focused on yourself. It's well, amazing. No, and I appreciate it. I'm telling you what I you ask me a question, I'm telling you the answer. I'm you not so good. good. I have to I'm telling you, you the answer, John. Can don't accuse me of putting that any so egotistical of you. What is egotistical? It's all about you. I don't care about you. Oh, I care well, about you just to pop into the movie. Go see it on your own time. It's what do you want from me? What do you mean, go see it? It's I have opportunities to, to see you? movies all the time, but a guy like you, I pop in, I'm quiet, I'm doing my own thing, and sure enough, what do you do? You cry like a little girl that you didn't want to be by yourself, and you had to be with your posse and nobody else. John, I'll attempt to explain it to you one more time. If you interrupt me, I'll hang up on you. You can hang up. I have people hang up me all the time. All right. So here I'll explain it Tell to you again. Tell your story to make it look like you're a good guy. I'm telling you the truth. I don't have to make up stories, pal. If I, I want to throw you out, I'll pick you up by the shirt tail and throw you out, dude. Oh, you're a big guy. That's right. You're a big guy. I could kick your ass. I'm sure you can. I know, you know I what? can. I'd size you up in two seconds. The people which I go to movie Hell screening. Hell, I'm getting thrown out of the movie screening. What about, I, I have nothing to you do with it. You're an elitist. I felt like, I, seriously, I was insulted. I am Jewish, 
And Who I'm cares? surprised you're Jewish. I'm Jewish. You don't stop complaining. The first thing I heard something come out of one of your people's mouths is those damn Jews trying to always get into these screenings and get what? Kind of booted out. Who oh, said these damn crap. Jews? I this never is, once said I that. I feel this is racist. Oh, he's full of it. You got to be kidding me, John. I am very insulted. All right, I'll finish the story after John hangs up because he's not letting me talk. Yeah. I'm letting you talk. He's making up things. I'm not I, making never, up things. I said I'm that you insulted. were a damn Jew. And not you. I'm talking about one of your people. Who, Who said it? that you were a damn Jew? Oh, I can't believe Name it. Name the person. Whoever, the guy with the funny looking, funny looking face. Who's the, the funny guy with the guy? big teeth? That's me. No, not you. The guy who looks, he's got the funny looking hair and he's got the big teeth that Sal, the stockbroker, picks on all the time. That's Yours me. Yours to take it. It's Gary Delabate. And you... it's, it's another one of Sal's. No. Things. Oh. So that wasn't the guy? No. Then no. how would he know what happened? How would he... I don't know. All I know is there was a guy at the screening who claimed to be from some magazine. And I know ahead of time, I think it was probably Sal's friends. I don't even think they're really magazine right. people. Right, they probably lied to get in. Exactly. So I said, I said to Anne Marie, I thought that we had a screening set up where we were getting a private screening. If there was going to be press here, we wouldn't come because what has happened to me many times is I'll say something in private to Robin and we'll be reading it in the paper. Right. You feel like you're being spied upon. <clears throat> so now I understand what happened. I was right. I said to Anne Marie, Anne Marie came up to me and said, listen. Uh, there's a bunch of people here from magazine. I said, I don't know anything about it. We're supposed to have a private screening. That's all I said. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I know, they were being escorted out of there. And it's a good thing. Yeah. And for the record. And the guy came up to me and goes, Howard, they're throwing us out of a screening. I said, I have nothing to do with this, dude. I'm yeah. just here to see a movie. Don't. I, I'm not here for controversy. I'm just here to relax. And for the record, Gary said the damn Jews thing completely under his breath. There's right. no Nobody way. could have heard it. Yeah. <laughs> so it turns out there's... I was right. They weren't yeah. magazine people. They were there to spy on us. Boy, things are weird. That's got to make you uncomfortable. I mean, you're trying to, you know, just hang yeah, out. Yeah, then I had this whole confrontation going on, and I was like... Yeah. Meanwhile, they weren't even from a magazine. I knew it. I knew it. You got to be suspicious of everyone. The man. How do you like that? Yeah, not even a magazine. Just somebody who wants to. And I was feeling bad during the movie. I was like, man, I, you know, that's, that was a weird occurrence. Mm -hmm. Turns out they were just like one of Sal's friends or something. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> oh, uh. man. This goes on all day, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put a pair of Sal to have kidnapped Ralph. We haven't heard from him and took his spot at the screening. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what happened. Yeah. Some guy claims I got him poontang yesterday. G Dog. Hello? How you doing, Howard? I got you Poontang? How you How'd I get you Poontang? Remember yesterday I was uh, talking about uh, talking to that girl, Trinity. Yeah. And I was on the air and telling the people to go over to Long Beach uh, Skate Park. And all of a sudden... Hey, you know what? I don't even care. Here's $500 cash courtesy of Dimension Home Videos Equilibrium, okay? Now we're giving you money as well. You've also qualified for a chance to win a home theater system. I don't even want to hear your story. Dimension Home Videos Equilibrium. This movie will blow you away. Available on DVD and video May 13th. Hold on. So I had to give away two of those, and I gave them away. Good. Done. Done deal. I had to go to the skate park. And... Yeah. <laughs> no. that, guy's, that guy's not known for his storytelling abilities. I know. But I do remember him from yesterday. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I can weave it tell. Hey, Alex, you're on the air. Hey. Hey. Howard, Alex, Orlando, Florida, baby. Hey, listen, a uh, question for you. When are you going to release a DVD uncensored box set, man? You've done your book. You've done your movie. Uh, what's going on, guy? Should have been out months ago. This is turning into the biggest headache. Is it a box set? <clears throat> I, well, you know, it's going to be a DVD of uncensored uh, moments from uh -huh. the E shows. Uh -huh. It's just taking I forever. The e show, and I'm upset because I feel restricted. I, I know, I know, and I'm putting better. I'm putting out an uncensored DVD, See, but you know what your problem I is? can't seem to get anybody to do it. What do you mean? You know? Well, I need someone to go through the archives and then cut up the tapes. Hey, it's simple. Nine, it's nine, nine days. Yeah, okay. I, I, Wait a minute. I'm trying to talk to you. What? Nobody will do that? I, it looks like I'm going to have to. I, well, we're working on it, but it just seems to be going very slowly. But you know what you have to do? I just figured this out. There is so much material. Break it down by the year? You have to limit it. You have to say, I'm going to do this 
portion of shows, not the entire I'm calling John Ryber archive. on Thursday. I'm going to tell him, do the early years, the yes. middle years, and then the right. late years. You can't do the entire right. archive at once because it's impossible. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, you got to segment it out. I'll do it by year. Yeah. Thank you. That's what I'm doing. All right, because I thought about I said, yes, there's way too much material. It's taking too long. I want to see it already. Thank you. It's uh, like I'm no producer, but like with today's segment, I would edit out Benji's bush and keep the girls' bushes. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Well, why don't you do it? Then? I mean, thank you. I'm no genius, but see now, I, that's I, I would... think Benji is funny. <laughs> yeah, but Robin, <laughs> gotta be a little comic relief. In yes, Sal. Hey, Howard. Yeah, I just got a phone call. What exactly happened? I don't know anything about this for real, honestly. Oh, all right, but there was some something went on at the movie screening yesterday that was a scam. We thought you were behind it, but. Never nah. not. Okay. Uh, over and above the show, I would never do that. Thank you, Sal. But I'll tell you one thing. You can see me tonight at the brokerage company. All right, we know. Thank you very much. I wonder anyway, Robin, let's... in so quickly. Let's do some news. I have an enormous job. Enormous job. I am right. from American Idol last night. No, you know what? I don't compare to those girls who were in here earlier for no. shaved or unshaved. You're pretty close, though. <laughs> that was amazing. You're in the ballpark. Well, maybe it's the juxtaposition. They're such little girls with such big boobs. You've got great cans. But uh, nice. can you imagine the nightmare of no television? No. And that is life in Baghdad these days. I feel bad for those people. They I mean, have no TV. Uh, well, it, it, it went off the air when Saddam Hussein was well, yeah, eliminated. Well, yeah, in the midst of getting rid of him. But you can imagine what television was like under Saddam Hussein. I don't think it was fun. Well, that's what, you know, now that I'm looking at what they were trying to put on, I'm like, maybe you don't need television. Because the only thing that was going to be on there anyway was a speech from, you know, the general who's, you know, in charge of the transition government. And some verses from the Koran. And uh, a Muslim prayer with the flag mm -hmm. flying. So I said, well, what kind of television is that anyway? Welcome yeah. to entertainment tonight. <laughs> entertainment Baghdad. Yes. But yeah, How do you like the uh, Iraqi people are accusing the United States government of censorship right now? They want to get on and do Muslim prayers and stuff. And we're saying, just hold on. We're trying to establish a government here that has nothing to do with religion. And they, they, they can't even get the concept. Right. Well, yeah, you can't take anything they say. Seriously. Give it credit of yeah. any weight at all because they don't know what they're talking about. Right. And we're trying to tell them you don't have to be Muslim anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't all have to be religious, that yeah. television. You're free. Right. Some of you, you can start a softball league. Yeah, you can make your own decisions. Right. Yeah, you can build the scores. Soccer games exactly. on. Right. Build something. the scores. They have no concept of what to do over there. Yeah, they got television. They want to put a flag and have prayers over it. Yeah. That's what they're going to do with a moving picture. Yeah, put some videos on there. <laughs> So anyway, I just imagine, you know, it could bring this country to its knees if we got, if our television was taken away from us. Are you kidding? My cable goes out. I'm freaking. <laughs> I know. I have funny. a heart attack. It is hard to live without TV, man. <laughs> what did people do before? I have no idea. My dad tells me he used to read books, but I don't believe him. Really? Yeah. Wow. They used to listen to radio. Uh, I know. That was a big deal. People used to... Uh, have words painted for them with pictures. Well, I tell you, no one's or cured a disease in a while. Pictures painted for them with words. Or I remember black and white television. Remember I, the I remember the first time I saw color television. Bewitched. You. Really? I was on a trip was down that? to Virginia. Yeah, for me it was. I don't thank know about you. you. I can't even, I don't even remember. Yeah, I remember I was going uh, down south. Thank with you. With my parents on a trip to Virginia. And we stopped off at like a deli. And they had a color TV in there, and Bewitched was in color. I was like, whoa. Well, I know there was color television long before we saw it in color. I don't think we ran out yeah. and got a color TV. No, me neither. Just because things were in color. I just couldn't believe it when I saw it. I was like, yeah. whoa, this is so great. But I remember color not being great when they first colored in television. Bought them. It didn't yeah. seem to be all that great. Really? I... I was blown out by it. Yeah. I remember when colors went on TV. <laughs> oh. No, 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 no. You're all confused. Damien, you're on the air. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Howard? Hey, brother. I am so mad. I tried to get on yesterday and talk about uh, talk to Jimmy. He is such a hack. Jimmy Kimmel? Yeah. Crank anchors. Didn't a couple guys from New York call a bunch of people and make a bunch of crank phone calls years ago? Oh, 
dude, I, I'm in a time. I'm in a time warp here with you. Oh God, what was those two guys' names? They used to make crank phone calls all the time. Jerky boys. The jerky boys. Hack. Jimmy Kimmel with the hack on that one. The man, you know, that's another hack. Remember uh, Married with Children? Ed O'Neill used to have a show called No Ma'am. Same thing as the Man Show. He hacked on that one. Oh my God, I I I wanted to call him, call him that so bad. Now he's a big star, and I guess he's no good for his, uh, for his wife. And now uh, <laughs> he had to go get a new girlfriend and everything else. I just I just can't stand Jim Kimmel. Hey, aren't you the guy who killed Lacey Peterson? be someone else. Speaking of Lacey Peterson, did you read that they found uh, her hair in some pliers on his boat? Yeah, I don't think he did it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. Uh, I think oh. the real killer probably planted the pliers there. <laughs> that, that's it. Okay. Hey, did you read Tommy Chung? Yes. He was arrested. He actually pleaded guilty to uh, selling... Drug paraphernalia. Yeah, he's like selling bongs and pipes. How sad. Tommy Chong from Cheech and Chong. Yeah. Dude, what's up? It's not surprising that he was selling that stuff. It's surprising that he needed to sell it. That's what I mean. I mean, come on. He's got to have cash. Well, what did you think? He made a lot of money? Yeah, he kind of did. Yeah. <laughs> Those records were huge. The Cheech and Chong albums and the movies were huge. The movies were huge hits. You know. I thought they were Yeah, rich. but I doubt if they made a lot of money. Really? That's why Cheech said he had to get out of the, the business. He broke up the relationship. Bongs and pipes, though? Well, what else is he going to sell? You know, Joan Rivers has her jewelry. <laughs> What's Tommy going to have? But they going to put him in jail for 6 to 12 months. What the hell is that That's about? That's crazy. It sucks. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing for him. He's a guy in his 60s, and he's still obsessed with pot. He's selling pipes and... Bongs. Yeah, I saw he had a little bit part, I guess, he used to play on that 70s show as yeah. like a stone, old stoner or something. It's also embarrassing for, you know, that's embarrassing for him. It's embarrassing for our country that we're locking up people for selling bongs and pipe. I think yeah, this, this is part of uh, Operation Pipe Dreams, the, um, the national that? drug crackdown with, with Attorney General Ashcroft. So we're making an example of Tommy <laughs> Yeah, poor old bastard. <laughs> We have nothing better to do. How about Operation Catch Some More Terrorists? <laughs> Operation Find Osama Bin Laden instead of Operation Drug Paraphernalia. Yeah, this is Operation We Don't Care. Yeah, how about Operation Airport Security before another plane goes into another building? <laughs> right. How about Operation Shoulder Launched Missiles or Operation Dirty Bomb? Uh, Get a few of those off the street. <laughs> Probably hundreds of people selling bongs and pipes and rolling papers on Operation the Operation Terrorist Cell. <laughs> they sell it on, cell. buy that stuff on the internet. You can go anybody, to bodegas, yeah, head shops, anybody. clothing stores, and every other freaking place here in New York. But Tommy can't sell. Them. Tommy Chong got arrested for it. Like people won't figure out another way to get that stuff into their system. And wasn't the time to make an example out of Tommy Chong twenty five years ago? Absolutely. No kind of reeks of uh, what the FCC does with me. Yeah. People are doing all kinds of weird crap, but yet they, the only one they can find to find is me. Right. They and, keep and censoring me. If you're looking to make an example of somebody in pot, I guess it's Tommy you have to go yeah. to. I'm for, like, dirty conversation. And, you know, if I even mention vagina, I'm, I'm already under investigation. And Tommy's, I mean, come on. <laughs> Twelve months in jail? My God, the guy's... He might not live <laughs> to complete that sentence. Hey. I know, I feel bad for him. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything we can do? They're really going to throw him in jail? Yeah. You know, they said that they did a study, good-looking people are less likely to go to jail than ugly people. Yes. And Tommy, I guess, isn't that good-looking. Because no, he got 12 not. months from for selling a pipe. <laughs> he's yeah. not a good-looking guy. <laughs> That's why KC can go on a nationwide killing spree and probably do a week. Yeah. You don't know that he's going to jail. He could face up to five yeah. years in prison and a $250,000 fine. A sentencing hearing is scheduled for September 11th. Oh, why bother? I know. It seems like a big waste of time. Well, you know what's interesting? You know that movie Blow with Johnny Depp? Yeah. Where he plays that cocaine guy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The whole movie, you're sympathetic to the guy. Right. Because it's Johnny Depp. It's a pleasant looking guy. You're like, ah, oh, don't put this guy in jail. At the very end of the movie, the whole screen fills with what the guy really looks like. They put up a picture of him. And you go, oh, my God, put that scumbag away for life. All I know is I see a picture of Yogi Berra in the paper today. He couldn't get away with, with a jaywalking he violation. He not do anything wrong. <laughs> yeah, Yogi's yeah. not going to do any modeling. 
What else is in the news, Robin? Uh, you know how you get on a, an airplane and somebody brings in a baby yeah. and the baby starts crying and you spend... And you want to throw the baby out the window? Six hours with some screaming kid ruining your flight? It's a nightmare. Well, I guess that's what this steward had in mind when he put Xanax in the baby's apple juice. Oh. Right in the apple juice? Yeah. So he, smart. He got caught. <laughs> How did he get caught? <laughs> the mom noticed that something looked funny in the apple juice. And mm. so she had it analyzed. Yeah, I guess he can't do that. Yeah, so <laughs> he's in trouble. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I want to interview that guy in the worst way. <laughs> he was uh, a former, he used to work for Northwest Airlines. Daniel Cunningham, 39. The baby was just crying and crying. So when the mom said, fix this apple juice for me, he fixed it all right. Put some Xanax in there. And I don't know if the baby got any of it or not. But hey, At least he didn't put the baby in the pet carrier. <laughs> oh, sorry. He could face a sentence of 11 years and a $600,000 fine. So he'll have to see how much time he has to do. And uh, under the category, weird ways of knocking off your lover's wife. Yeah, yeah. Now, how do you do that? An unlicensed nurse who had been hired by a couple to take care of the wife because the wife had MS. Yeah. And she was really, she had it bad. She couldn't move. She couldn't walk. She couldn't feed herself. Uh, so she moves in with the family. And I guess she and the husband start doing their thing. She's actually nursing the husband, not the wife. Right. And so now, you know, the guy's buying her engagement rings, and they're having this wonderful affair, but the invalid wife is still hanging around. Mm. So uh, one day, she fed her a bagel with cream cheese, knowing that the woman wouldn't be able to swallow it. Oh, and, and she, she died? she choked to death, yeah. So, there yeah. you go. <laughs> can, you kill, can you put someone in jail for that? I mean, how are you going to prove that that was intentional? Hey, Christopher Reeve, if you're listening, listen up. <laughs> if anyone tries to give you a bagel, dude, you know, you know there's a you know what's up. shenanigans. Andy, what's up? Hey, how you doing, Howard? Hey, brother. Uh, I just want to let you know that uh, I've seen that picture of your bathroom on the Internet, and there's some cities that could uh, padlock your building and close you up for a year for stuff like that. Good. Let them yeah, do it. Yeah, I had something like that happen to me. They came in. The, I've got an adult bookstore. Yeah. And they came in with, uh, I mean, to the naked eye, my store was clean, spotless, but they came in with black lights. And uh, they shine them all over the floors and walls, and it's supposed to show bodily fluids or whatever. <clears throat> and they padlocked my place, kept me closed for over a year. Oh, because they found what? Semen? Well, because stuff shined in the uh -huh. black light. I was going to tell you, you could probably take a black light in the ladies' bathroom that you guys was talking about that was so clean, and it under the black light, if you turn the lights out in there and just the black light, it wouldn't look... Uh, Where's your store? My store is in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Mm. Yeah, I'm nice. open back up now, but they're still harassing me. But uh, We're in a country where we try to pretend that Men don't want pornography. Meanwhile, it's it's about seven billion dollars a year we spend on pornography. And do you right. realize we are the biggest consumers of pornography? Yeah, and, in the world. But we we still are trying to bust porno shops because we want to pretend like nobody really wants this stuff around. It's it's absolutely hypocritical. And you know they brought the health department with them, yeah. and the health department wouldn't back them up. They said that there was no uh, health hazard in my place. But they said it was a health hazard, and that made me a public nuisance. I'd like to give you $500. Well, I'd like to take it. <laughs> Sounds like you could use it. And uh, <clears throat> $500 courtesy of Dimension Home Videos Equilibrium. You've also qualified for a chance to win a home theater system plus an equilibrium viewing party with John at your house. Dimension Home Videos Equilibrium. This movie will blow you away. Available on DVD and video May 13th. Let's face it. I mean, can you imagine trying to run a video, a, a, an adult store? Oh. In Ypsilanti, Michigan? Forget let, about let it. Let me tell you what else happened. The most they could close me down for a public nuisance was 12 months, but they had me closed down for over 14 months. Yeah, they want you to go broke. Well, yeah, they kept postponing my uh, trial, and twice the reason for the postponement was for the prosecutor to... Uh, to make sure you go broke. Patient. Yeah. yeah, they're trying to run him out of business. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hey, bro, good luck, and hold on. I'll give you 500 bucks. Okay, thanks a lot, Howard. Later. <laughs> Take care. Bye. What the hell? A guy could use it.
That was my last one. Don't keep calling me for All that. Right. At least they needed special light to find that guy's bodily fluid. Yeah, you don't have to shine any black light in the men's room. Yeah. Not here. It's right there for the naked eye. Check see? Benji's chair. You'll see oh, some. Man. You don't need no black light. Oof. What else, Robin? Uh, do you hear? Did you hear what's going on in Texas? For the first time in a long time, the state legislature, the majority of it is Republican. So it was time to debate the redistricting that goes on after the census every several years, every 10 years. And the Democrats have left town because they don't want, you know, if you don't have 100 legislators on the floor, you don't have a quorum. You can't do any business in the state legislature of Texas. It's awful. So there are 88 Republicans and I guess, or 88 Democrats, I think. I'm not sure which way it goes. But anyway, there's a majority of Republicans. All the Democrats ran out of town so that they have less than 100 people to try to do business in the state of Texas. And so the uh, head of the legislature decided to issue a warrant for their arrest so they could be brought back. But they all ran over to Oklahoma. Let me tell you something. <laughs> These politicians forget they're hired. They're, 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 they're in a sense elected to do the state's business. You can't run out of town. They're in Oklahoma staying That's in a hotel just across the border. And the uh, I guess the people who run Oklahoma are Democrats. So they're not allowing the Texas Rangers to come in and get the Democratic legislature uh, uh, that, legislature members. That's unbelievable. Yeah, so they, they can't do any business down there right now because those guys won't come back. Shame on them. Yeah, so it's kind of crazy. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after these words. Here's an excerpt from a book on drug lord Pablo Escobar. To entertain his closest friends, Pablo would hire a gaggle of beauty queens for evenings of erotic games. The women would strip and race naked toward an expensive sports car, which the winner would keep, or submit to bizarre humiliations, shaving their heads, swallowing insects, or engage in naked tree climbing contests. The Howard Stern Show. Ronald, 92.3, K-Rock. Out, out, Howard Stern. Hey, now. Hey, now. Uh, Robin, hey, Robin. Hey, One thing I'd say you'd want to avoid if you're this administration, uh, the Bush administration, hey. Howard, is the uh, even the appearance that uh, you're benefiting from the war in Iraq. Right. So uh, this looks a little weird. Uh, Senator Frank Lautenberg, the Democrat from New Jersey, is saying Democrats want to know why a company with uh, former ties to U.S. Vice President Dick Cheney is getting lots of money from the government to help build Iraq. D3. Oh, man, that's bad. Yeah. Don't do it, man. Oh, what's wrong with these guys? Halliburton is the company that was once owned by Dick Cheney and has a multi-million dollar agreement to rebuild Iraq. See, now that's something the guy should be impeached for. That's just bad form. Yeah, what's how, how dumb do you have to be to make this mistake? Ah, that sucks. What is it? D3. D3, okay. This uh, contract could grow to as much as $7 billion, or maybe 10% of uh, the cost of helping uh, rebuild Iraq. It, it's the lack of transparency. It's the right. secrecy that surrounded this huge contract. Boy, that's bad form. Yeah. Was there bidding that went on in this contract? Uh, then nobody knows. That's uh. why they want to take a look at how this all came to pass. Mm -hmm. So now we'll have an investigation. And that, that, that's just bad form Ugh. what else is in the news i know it just <laughs> a company, you can't even believe it a company formerly owned by the vice president just uh. is gonna get billions of dollars I mean, that's just bad yeah <laughs> that's just blatant you know, everybody <laughs> wants to be behind you you dopes <laughs> yeah, don't screw up we're trying yeah, we're all here for you yeah. don't mess this up uh, how much does it cost America that uh, most of us are overweight? Seventeen dollars and ninety-five cents. Oh, <laughs> I don't know how much. You're a little off. It's ninety-three billion dollars annually in oh, medical bills. Excuse me for not knowing how much <laughs> fat costs. Sorry. Well, actually, I thought you were, you know, would be aware of this because you're always screaming that it costs you money. Of course it does. Uh, medical bills alone that we pay for medical insurance because fat people are ill all the time. They say of that $93 billion, half of it's paid by the government. Right. So it's taxpayer money 
to uh, deal with the illnesses and the infirmities caused by obesity. You know who's bankrupting this country? Artie and Benji. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Benji costs me fifty dollars a day. They're taking us all mm -hmm. down with them. You bet. So uh, just remember that when you're saying it's not a societal problem, it's a personal problem. It is. No more uh, French fries, Artie. I'm sorry. Artie yeah. ate an entire bag of Milano oh. cookies. No, well, no. I didn't because I got ripped yeah. off. I bought a, a, a Milano cookies this morning, and I thought it's the regular kind, but in real small print, it says raspberry. He had raspberry Milanos. Yeah, so I had to force them down. Oh. <laughs> I got that real, is a rip, by the I, way. It is a rip off. I, on the shelf, it looks like Milano cookies. I get in the studio, Robin. I was so excited. First commercial break. It says raspberry in small print. And I was like, you mother effers. Yeah, that might even be healthy a little bit. Yeah. What's <laughs> raspberry in that? My chocolate. It might be healthy. <laughs> but I had lunch with Artie yesterday at 11 o'clock. <laughs> what do you eat? He just had like a turkey burger and a, a, a salad. I'm like, wow, Artie's, Artie's, Artie's eating well. Right. And then, and then, I, and then he gets on the phone and he goes, all right, I'll see you for lunch at one. <laughs> he has a second like lunch at two hours later. <laughs> Is that right? Artie, Artie, Artie. I had lunch with these guys, and the problem was I can't, it was at 1 o'clock, and I can't st starve myself. I, I got I to gotta have a pre-lunch. <laughs> I got to find out the turkey burger thing. So what would you have for lunch, lunch? I had a hamburger. Hmm. <laughs> and fries. What did you have with the hamburger? <laughs> fries and spinach dip. <laughs> oh, yeah, spinach. Well, because Mickey Mantles has the great spinach dip. I went over there. Oh, who ever heard of that? Anything else, Robin? <laughs> yes. What is a Sorry. normal blood pressure? Do you know? Normal br blood pressure is something over 80, I think. Or 120 90. over 80 is yeah. what we've been calling. As long as you're like there or a little bit below or a little mm -hmm. bit above, people have been saying you're like pretty much okay. But now they're changing everything. They know. They have now designated a new category. They know. No longer is 120 over 80 considered normal. You have to have a reading under 120 over 80. I do. And if you have... It's like all the matters that I do. 120 over 80, you're what they're calling pre-hypertensive. Thank you. And you're going to start getting counseling about how you should change your diet and lifestyle from your doctor if you, get, Thank you. you fall into that category. Testing, testing. Thank One, you. two. Thank you. So just remember Thank that. You. Thank you. <laughs> There are new Thank guidelines. You. Thank you. The um, San Antonio <laughs> Spurs. Thank, Thank you. Took a three games to two lead over the L.A. Lakers yes. last you. night. You have that, Arnie? And <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> C3 is Greg Popovich, the coach of the Spurs. Thank you. Is there any negative feeling about having nearly coughed up a huge lead in that game and almost losing, Greg? C3. No, not a bit. This is, we're thrilled. Are you kidding me? We just played a team. It's a three-time NBA champion, and we're up 3-2 to two in the series. I don't know how the series is going to go. We're going to continue to play our ass off. I couldn't be more happy. There you, there you go. go. Thank you. Testing. Thank you. One, two. <laughs> VJ Singh, testing. I told you testing. yesterday he's upset here. One, two. A no. woman we are now testing this out. Good Lord. He's not going to let you talk. Calm down. Yes. <laughs> VJ Singh. Thank he's you. a golfer, and he's upset that a woman is going to be playing in one of the uh, tournaments against men. Yeah. So here, uh, you know, he got a lot of heat after he said that he'd uh, leave if he was paired with her. So he's trying to clarify his statements now. Here's VJ Singh, C4. Me not playing with her was uh, saying that my category was different, you know. And if, and if, if I did, if I was put with her, that means I wasn't given the right uh, attention about my category. And, uh and that was clear. <laughs> now do you understand? Yeah. He still doesn't understand why uh, Annika Sorenstam has this desire to play on the PGA Tour, C5. This is a man's tour, and uh, there are guys out there trying to make a living, so, you know, it's... it's uh, it is the men's tour. He's right about that. Yeah, I mean, he's right. He has a point. He's got a point. Now he finally made one. <laughs> this is the men's tour. Yes. I'm not on the women's tour. What's with these bitches? <laughs> so there, it is the men's tour. What's mm -hmm. she doing in it? Carrie Ann Moss is uh, one of the stars of The Matrix. Yes. yes. Sexy. Opening in uh, some theaters tonight and hey now. all theaters tomorrow. She was asked if she had any second thoughts about the stunts she had to perform in The Matrix Reloaded, A1. The motorcycle was a challenge for me. Yeah. I wasn't sure about the motorcycle till the day that I did it. Yeah, is she an actress or a stunt person? 
good point. I didn't really talk to the brother. Who cares? (laughs) And she says physical stunts don't come naturally to her. A2. Now, I I don't want to risk my life. (laughs) I'm not an adrenaline junkie. I wish I could learn more about her. (laughs) She is pregnant. (sighs) All right. Showing up at all the publicity uh, things now. Pregnant. Mm. So she doesn't quite look like Trinity right now. We were talking to the Survivor winner yesterday, (laughs) Jenna Maraska. Yes, Jenna. And uh, here she was asked if she's patched up her relationship with Christy Smith, the deaf girl on Survivor. Be one. Absolutely. What Christy is really incredible in so many different ways. I mean, I don't think we gave each other really a, that much of a chance, I, you know, so I think it's... No, you know, it's time to forget about Jenna. <laughs> you know what? You, you know what? You were right watching that show. I hate that broad. Yeah. She's a pain in the ass. Exactly. Man. You know, I sort of liked Heidi after meeting her, but I wasn't so sure. I was like, <laughs> this chick Jenna is so phony. Fo- she's so phony. I'm going to make out with you. Yeah, and then I'm not. <laughs> hey, no, no. Well, Shut up, we bitch. also all wanted to know why Christy changed her mind and voted for Jenna. Here's another answer. D, uh, B3. Because when you get voted out, it's a very emotional period. And you are... Well, let it all out. <laughs> and then you sit and you reflect and you think and you're like, who deserves that million dollars? And happened to be Matt and Jenna. And it was like, Matt, nice guy, good fun. But Jenna, wow. I was a very big competitor. Ah. How come all deaf people about? sound like that? I mean, like, what are you talking about? It's like, you know, all gay guys, like, not all, but a lot of them were like, oh, hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like, I'm definitely like, nah, nah, nah. Like, I wonder what they don't realize. <laughs> but uh, she's crazy. Who? <laughs> Christy. I mean, oh. she voted for a girl who was absolutely brutal to her. I don't understand her at all. Well, I, you know. I'm still looking for the right answer, but that's the answer we've gotten so far. I think because she couldn't hear, she thought she was voting against Jenna. <laughs> she thought it was still like you vote her out of the tribe. She didn't realize the voting had changed. Yeah, I felt bad for Christy, but I, I don't know why she's voting for Jenna. Anyway, go ahead. Bruce Almighty is opening on May 23rd. That's a new Jim Carrey film. Jim's coming in to promote that. That's right, and here he is on Bruce and why he's so unhappy. C1. I play a reporter who's very unhappy with his lot in life. You know, he wants to be Walter Cronkite, but unfortunately he's uh, he's been relegated to the human interest uh, side of the news. The, uh, you know, the puppy saved from the well, uh, the giant uh, record sa- uh, record-making cookie, uh, and uh, things like that. So he's very unhappy with uh, the idea that uh, just for the rest of time, he's all he's going to do is make people laugh. Then he becomes God, right? Yeah, he gets God's yep. power. Right. So it should be good. And John Entwistle, I didn't know that he um, could garner this kind of attention, but they had one of those auctions of his stuff, and it brought in a lot of money. How much? Uh, they they say that certain lots brought in about four times what they expected them to gross. He had a Fender Precision guitar called Frankenstein. That was uh, that was his guitar made up of uh, four different smashed bases, and they thought it would sell for about eleven thousand dollars. Well, they got a hundred thousand four hundred dollars for that one guitar. It was in the Who, and it was in a lot of one hundred fifty guitars. So there were a bunch of his guitars that were sold for in the Whoa. tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars, and even his. Uh, life-size casts of fish he caught brought in a lot of money i'd love to meet the loons who buy this stuff (laughs) i really would i can't imagine why you'd buy this casts of 30 fish including a hammerhead shark unbelievable marlins and a barracuda which he caught in the caribbean who would buy this that brought in thirty one thousand dollars. oh my god this country has way too much money Drawings of his famous friends, including Rolling Stone uh, bassist Bill Wyman, Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton, and uh, others also uh, went under the hammer. I don't know how much he got for the draw, or somebody got for the drawings, but 
People wanted even his fish. The people who buy this stuff must be friends of Dick Cheney who get these <laughs> oil contracts or something to rebuild yeah. Iraq. Yeah, worth billions of dollars. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of money. I mean, who would even care about his guitar? I, I don't know. I don't who would care about the fish? Maybe right. the guitar. Yeah, the fish is ridiculous. That's right. That's crazy. Well, that's what's happening. Thank you, Robin. We'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget the E! Show tonight. More from our Las Vegas trips. Whack Pack Blackjack tonight. And we'll see you tomorrow.